Hello, everyone, and welcome to your Tuesday evening practice. I hope that your week is off to a wonderful start. And as we all are moving through our weeks, we are moving into the challenges that may arise throughout the work week. We are working on maintaining some level of balance within our lives between our responsibilities and ourselves and our self-care. And so that's what our practice this evening will embody. We are going to face and embrace challenges and we are going to work through a series of balancing postures as well so we can take our physical balance as a way of incorporating that balance out and into our lives. So if you'd like to set your mat up near a wall or a chair on hand to help you with your balancing postures, please feel free. Grab any props that you would prefer to practice with, if any at all, and I'll meet you on your mat. is I embrace challenges. And often when we think about challenges in our lives, we almost think of them as scary, something to fear or survive or simply put our heads down and get through. But what's really important to remember and acknowledge is that everything in our lives is here to teach us. And it is these challenging times and any challenges that may arise that can often be our greatest teachers. And it's important for us all when we deal with challenges to take a little step back, to remove ourselves from the emotion of the situation and ask what it is that we can gain, what it is that we can learn from the challenge at hand. Because when we overcome each challenge in our lives, we grow as a result. So let's remember that. Let's keep our mantra, I embrace challenges, near and dear to us this evening as we move into our practice. So when you're ready, we're actually going to meet in standing to start us off. So find your way to the top of your mat. I'll just stay facing you to start. And we are going to bring our feet hip width distance apart. From here, watch my kneecaps lift. So from a bent knee, I'm gonna really engage and activate my legs. My quadriceps are active, my pelvis slightly tilts. And then I'm going to round my shoulders back and down as I shine my palms powerfully forward towards you. Now, if it feels comfortable for you to close your eyes, please do. Otherwise, a nice, soft gaze just beyond your mat. Activate through your fingers. Spread your fingers wide. Keep your hands active. Feel that prana energy, that life force energy flowing through them. Bringing your awareness down the backs of your legs all the way to your heels. Press your body weight down through the heels. Lift your toes like you're wiggling them or waving to me. And we're gonna set them down one at a time, feeling all the toes plugging into the mat. And I just want us to stand here for a moment, feeling our power, the engagement of our entire body from the bottoms of the feet up through the crown of the head. I embrace challenges. As you stand here, feel strong and rooted in your foundation. Feel powerful as you reach skyward through the top of your head. Begin to breathe deeply, maybe activating your ujjayi breathing if that's part of your practice by constricting the back of your throat. Audible inhale, exhales here. Finding your power in this stance. Tapping into your ability to not only face, but also embrace challenges. One more breath. Beautiful job. Now with your next inhale, you can softly open the eyes. And we'll begin with a little breath and movement flow. We'll link one breath to one motion, gently warming up our bodies. With your inhale, take your arms up overhead. With your exhale, swan dive forward, fold, gently bending the knees. 
halfway lift, straighten into the legs, hands to shins or thighs, get a nice flat back, inhale, exhale, fold, releasing hands down to the mat. And then we'll reverse it. Inhale, reverse swan dive. Take your arms up overhead. Exhale, hands through heart center. Here we go. Inhale up. Maybe gaze lifts this time. Exhale, swan dive, fold. Inhale, find your half lift. Exhale, flow. Moving nice and slow. Treating yourself to a full inhale breath, rising all the way up. And then to full exhale, guiding hands all the way through heart center. Good, here we go. Inhale, rise. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Reverse swan dive. Inhale, arms up. And exhale, hands through heart center. Good, we're gonna add on with a chair pose. Inhale, take your arms up. Exhale, sink down low. Inhale, rise. Exhale, swan dive. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reverse swan dive. Exhale, hands through heart. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, chair. Inhale, rise. Exhale, swan dive. Halfway lift. Forward fold. Reverse swan dive, arms up overhead. Exhale, hands through heart center. Final time, here we go. Inhale, rise. Exhale, chair, sink down nice and low. Inhale, lift. Exhale, swan dive. Halfway lift, inhale. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reverse. And exhale, hands through heart center. Beautiful work. We're going to pause here, stepping the feet together. Our body's nice and warmed up. We're moving into Induladasana, standing crescent moon pose. Again, your heels and toes are touching. Your legs are straight and strong. We'll take our arms up overhead. Inhale. We're going to interlace the fingers, releasing the index fingers. I'll draw my biceps all the way back by my ears and then lengthen up through my fingertips, growing nice and tall here as I knit my rib cage together and scoop my pelvis forward. Inhale, grow a little taller, keeping everything engaged. And then exhale up and over. We're going to hinge towards the right as we press our hips left. Center with an inhale breath. Exhale, opposite side. Fingers reaching left, hips pressing right. Inhale, center as we tick-tock side to side. Good. Trying to keep your biceps back by your ears. Trying to squeeze your palms together. Beautiful work. Let's meet back in center. Inhale, breath. You can bend your elbows for a breath and then lengthen the arms back up overhead as you're ready. Now, engaging the core here, tucking the pelvis, we're gonna lengthen up, grow taller, making sure the weight's in your heels as we exhale up and over right and hold here. Good, now let's start from the fingertips down. You're gonna squeeze your palms towards each other, Pull the biceps back by your ears, rounding your top shoulder forward as you're pressing that left hip forward. Now pretend as if you're in between two panes of glass, a pane of glass touching the tips of your toes and the other touching the back of your heels. So you would have to hinge and reach directly between the two panes of glass so we're not hinging forward or rounding backward. So staying strong here. Good, keeping your hips pressing forward, keeping your core so strong and engaged. Keep breathing, keep staring directly forward as if you have a grapefruit between your chin and your chest. You've got it. 
final 10 seconds, using your bottom arm to pull the left arm up and overhead. Keep breathing, stay with me, you got this. Final three, two, and one. Inhale through center, beautiful job. We're gonna bend the knees, we're gonna bend our elbows, we're gonna reset and grow nice and tall. Inhale, breath, get back to your mantra. I embrace challenges. With your exhale, up and over, left side. A great pose to apply that mantra, right? Now, if you feel any pressure in your lower back, that's an indication that you need to engage your core more and or tuck the pelvis. Good. Biceps back by your ears. This time rounding top right shoulder back as you gently press your right hip forward. Strong core, strong core, strong core. Your kneecaps are lifted. Your legs are active and strong, pressing your body weight down through your heels. Feel as if there's a giant invisible beach ball that you're lifting up and then over on that left side body. Keep breathing, you've got this. You are so strong, you're doing amazing. Keep telling yourself that, stay with it. For three, two, and one. Beautiful work coming back through center, releasing the arms, you can shake those out. And then we're just gonna bring our hands to the lower back. We're gonna gently press our hips forward, reach the heart forward, and then send your gaze along the ceiling. And I'm gonna turn to face forward so you can see what this looks like as if you're pressing your hands into your back pockets. Breathe in. And we'll slowly rise. Beautiful work. We'll take our arms up overhead. Inhale, breath. I'm just stepping to the top of my mat to meet you. And exhale, swan dive, fold. Good, take a halfway lift, inhale, breath. Exhale, fold, grabbing the back of your heels or calves and just take an extra breath in your forward fold. Inhale, let's find one more halfway lift. And exhale, plant the palms. Now we're gonna jump or step ourselves back to plank. For this video, you have the option to flow or you can simply meet us in down dog. If you'd like to flow, shift forward onto the toes, lower down halfway chaturanga, release to the top of your feet. Inhale, cobra. Tucking toes, lifting hips up and back. Exhale, downward facing dog. Ah, <sighs> deep inhale. Deep exhale. From here, send your gaze forward. Little baby steps. We're gonna walk all the way to the front of the mat, bending your knees as much as you need to, bringing feet between the hands, finding another forward fold. Good, from here we're gonna heel toe the feet to touch, and we're gonna round up one vertebra at a time, coming all the way up to standing taking your arms up overhead, and then guiding your hands to heart center for our first balancing posture, tree pose. I'm gonna turn to face you again. You can stay facing forward, whatever you prefer. Vrik Sasana, tree pose, a classic balancing asana. Now, we're going to start with our right foot planted. You're going to spin the left heel to touch the inner right ankle. That's option one. This is a lovely kickstand variation to help you with your stability, with your balance. You can stay here. If you'd like to bring it into the one leg balance, then you can bring your foot to your inner right calf. Again, you can stay here as well. If you would like to take the foot all the way to the top of that inner right thigh, feel free. These are the three options that we're going to work with in today's practice. Now, wherever you are, just be sure that you're never placing your foot directly on your knee joint, please. You don't wanna compromise that joint. So below or above, and I'll stick to above. Now, once you have your foot placement, your hands are back to heart center. You're gonna press your outer left knee to come in line with the hip if that's available. So you're getting a nice gentle hip opening here. Grounding down through all five right toes as well as all four corners of that standing right foot. Right leg is strong and engaged. Now a key aspect in our balancing postures is our drishti, or in other words, where we set our gaze. So find a point in front of you that's ideally not moving. 
So maybe that's a water bottle or a piece of furniture, something nearby that you can set your gaze on to help you find your stability and your balance. Nice deep breathing. Keeping your body strong and engaged is another way to help yourself maintain that stability and maintain a balancing posture. Stay here for three more breaths. Awesome, great work. Now with your next breath, we're gonna slowly release the left foot down and then we're gonna shake that right leg out because it just did a lot of work. All right. Now we've got another side. So let that go. Let's take a deep inhale together. Deep exhale out the mouth. Ah. All right. Let's get back to it. We will start with the left foot planted. Right foot will go through the options again. Inner ankle for your kickstand. Inner calf if you're ready to lift the foot entirely. Or inner left thigh. Just avoiding that knee joint. And again, if you would like to use a wall, boop, or a chair to help you with your balance, feel free. All right, now once you've got the foot placement, we'll bring our hands back to our heart center. Feel your thumb knuckles pressing into your heart center, round your shoulders back and down. Gaze powerfully, proudly forward, embracing the challenge of this balancing posture. Now if you wobble, that's okay, I'm wobbling a little bit too. That's okay, find your stability amidst the wobble. Now here we are on side two, so we've settled into what to expect from this pose. While you're welcome to keep your hands at heart center, if you wanna try something new for side two, let's go for it. I'm going to grow my prayer overhead and open it into the branches of my tree. If you would like to try this with me, this is a fun balance challenge because the movement is going to throw your balance off a bit. So try this if you would like, if you feel ready. And remember, you can always revisit these videos, so maybe this is something you add on to over time. Good. Three final breaths, wherever you are. We'll begin slowly making our way back to heart center. And we'll take a final breath here together. Awesome job. Now when you're ready, we'll slowly release the right leg down and we'll shake that left side out. Now I've got some good news. We get another round of our tree pose, so we get to try it one more time. However, on our second round, we're gonna do something a little different. We're gonna try closing our eyes all together. So don't be afraid, let's just try it. If you wobble, if you fall out of the pose, who cares? Try again, no big deal. So we'll start again with grounding down through that right foot. Now, if you'd like to keep the kickstand for this variation so you can get familiar with having your eyes closed, go for it. Otherwise, any leg placement of your choice. And then for this time, we're gonna keep our hands to heart center. Find your drishti that we spoke of. This is interesting. So you're gonna find your drishti, and then you're gonna close your eyes and try to maintain that drishti now in your mind's eye. Again, if you wobble, no worries. If you fall out, awesome. That means you're trying something new. That means you're challenging yourself. Woo! <laughs> We've got two more breaths. See what you've got. If you do fall out of it, physically find your drishti and then close your eyes when you're ready and try to keep it in your mind's eye. We've got two more breaths. Yes, so good. Woo! When you're ready, softly open your eyes. I hope you're smiling. This is supposed to be fun. Have fun with it. Let it go. Let that left leg down and shake your legs out. We've got one more side. All right, here we go. Let's see what happens. Left foot stays planted, right foot. One, two, or three. When you have that foot placement, hands coming to heart center, finding your drishti with your physical gaze. Don't rush it, but when you're ready, you'll close your eyes and maintain the drishti woo, with your mind's eye. It's challenging, you guys. It's a fun challenge, though. We embrace this challenge, don't we? Take a couple more breaths. If you fall out, that's OK. Woo, if you need to open your eyes and recalibrate, awesome. Do what you need to do. Final breath in. And 
and release. Awesome job. Shake it out. Let it go. Let's take a deep inhale together. Arms up overhead. I'm going to meet you at the top of the mat. And exhale, swan dive, fold. Here comes your optional flow, otherwise meeting us in down dog. We take a halfway lift inhale. Exhale, palms plant, jump or step back to plank pose, otherwise down dog. If you're flowing, shift forward, inhale, chaturanga, exhale. Cobra or up dog, inhale, down dog is where we meet. <sighs> Take an extra breath here. Inhale, deep and full with me. Open mouth. <sighs> Great work. Once more, we look forward and baby step our way to the top of the mat. Feet between hands, halfway lift, inhale. Exhale, fold. One vertebra at a time, we roll all the way to standing and take our arms up overhead. Exhaling, hands to heart center. I'll turn to face you for our next balancing posture, which is dancer pose, Natarajasana, one of my personal favorite postures. It's challenging, but oh so rewarding and empowering. So I'll face you for this first side. How we begin is we will guide our left hand out like we're holding a tray. We're going to bend our left knee up and then grab the inner arch of your left foot. I'm gonna turn to the side now so you can see that it's the inner arch. I see the outer arch often in class. Let's go for the inside grip. This will empower your movements. Starting with knees close together, we're gonna to inhale to take our right arm skyward, right palm facing forward. Use your next inhale breath. We're gonna go nice and tall through the spine and those right fingertips. Now with your exhale breath, we are going to hinge, kick, and reach simultaneously. Now my hip bones stay facing forward and down. So I'm not opening up into that left hip. That makes it challenging. So hip bones stay pointing down. My right leg is strong and engaged here. And now with every inhale, I'm going to kick into my foot. I'm going to reach with my arm and lift through my heart. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, kick and hinge. Beautiful. Inhaling to lengthen. Exhaling to kick. You've got this. Press down through that standing big toe. Keep breathing. If you wobble or fall out, get right back in. If you would like to use a wall, this right hand can be pressing into the wall or maybe holding a chair here for stability. Find what works best for you. We've got three breaths here. You are doing awesome. Stay with it. Find that drishti. Keep breathing. Last breath. Woo, awesome job. We'll slowly come up. We'll release the hands and the feet and just shake that all out. Ha, huh. awesome job. A challenging posture, but so fun and so rewarding. Let's go for side two. I'll turn to face the front of the mat with you. Now this time our right arms come out like we're holding a tray. We'll bend that right knee up. Inside grip, inner arch with that right foot. Reset the knees towards each other. Left arm lengthens and inhales up. With your next inhale, grow tall through the spine. Reach through those left fingertips. And as you exhale, we're going to kick and hinge. Keep reaching and kicking with equal and opposite energy. Point both of your hip bones forward and down. Kicking, reaching, hinging, balancing, all the things. We are embracing the challenge of this posture. If you wobble, that's okay. Accept where you are in this moment. Embrace it. Keep breathing. Keep kicking. Keep hinging. You've got this. Final three. And two. And last one, slowly come up. Woo, shake it off and fold. Ha, ah, great work. Halfway lift, inhale. Exhale, meet us in down dog or plant the palms and step back to plank pose. If you're flowing, let's inhale forward. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, cobra or up dog. Exhale, tuck the toes, lift the hips. We all meet in downward facing dog. Deep inhale, breath with me. 
Open mouth, exhale. Good. Let's get ready for our final balancing posture. Look forward. You guessed it. Baby step those feet forward. It's all about the baby steps, my friends. Embracing our challenges one step at a time. Take a little halfway lift. Inhale. Exhale, fold. One vertebra, we rise all the way up. Arms up overhead. And I'll turn to face you for Garudasana, Eagle Pose. Keeping your arms overhead to start, we're going to swing the right arm underneath the left, crossing at elbows and again at your wrists. If wrists are not available, just grab your opposite shoulders instead. All right, from here, feet are touching. We're going to bend deep into our knees. And then right leg lifts high up and over the left, crossing at knees, working to cross again at your calves and ankles. If that's not available for you, just give yourself a kickstand or point your toes in the general direction you're working towards. Good. Now from here, we're going to refine our posture. So sink your booty down towards the mat. Really press down through all four corners of your grounded left foot. Now from here, we want all the joints aligned down the center seam of our body. So you want to slightly shift your knees to the right, elbows slightly left and down. If your wrists are crossed, we want our hand to be directly in front of our nose like the eagle's beak. Good. Squeeze tight, sink down a little deeper. We're going to go for a different shoulder stretch. We're going to send our fingertips skyward. The rest of our body remains the same. Inhale, breath. With your exhale now, let's hinge forward, crouching eagle. One breath here, challenging posture, but you can work through this. And we rise and unwind. Inhale, arms up. Ha, right into side two we go. Take another inhale breath. Exhale, left arm now underneath the right, crossing at elbows and wrists or grab those shoulders. Feet touching, sink down low into the knees. Now the higher you can lift your left leg up and over, the better you'll be able to wrap. Again, if the wrap's not accessible, point or kickstand, wherever you are. Squeeze tight and sink down a bit lower. Ground down through all four corners of that right foot. Knees left, elbows right, sink down. Squeeze. From here, reach your fingertips skyward. Take another inhale breath with me. And then to exhale to hinge forward, crouching eagle side two. Awesome job, nice and slow we come up. We're gonna take our arms up overhead, inhale breath. Meeting you at the front of the mat. Exhale to swan dive, forward fold. Halfway lift, inhale. Exhale, palms plant. Meet us in down dog or flow. Good. Downward dog is where we meet. We're going to step our left foot in towards the center, taking our right leg skyward. From here, we're going to shift forward, preparing for pigeon pose, Ekapada Raja Kapatasana, extending our left leg long. And then from there, we'll release to the top of that left foot. Press palms into mat, grow tall. Inhale. And then exhale, we'll release to the forearms if that's okay. You can even come all the way down to rest your forehead on the forearms. I'm going to stay upright for this. And if you decide, you know what, that's too much on your hips today, no worries. Press back up to palms. An advanced practice is not about how deeply you can access a pose. An advanced practice is when you can be authentic and truthful with where you are in a given day and in a given pose and be okay with that place. Wherever you are, just breathe nice and deeply into this hip opening. So many of us have tight hips and so pigeon pose can be quite a challenging posture. So show up for it. Breathe into it, be okay with where you are, and back off if you need to. Just breathe and be gentle with yourself. And with your next breath, we're gonna slowly press back onto the palms if we're not there already. We have a fun little pigeon pose challenge now. So we're going to plant the palms and you can just scoot that right palm directly outside the right knee. We're going to tuck the left toes and then keep our pigeon shape as we lift that right knee up. We're going to lower and lift, 
Pigeon pose push-ups. Yes, three, two, and one. Lift it up and send it back. Awesome job. Bend your knees, stack your hips, take a breath here. <sighs> Great work. Straighten that right leg and then we'll set it back down. Set it close to center now as we take our left leg skyward. Inhale, pigeon side two, here we go. Exhale, send that left foot forward. Sending the right leg long, releasing to the top of that right foot. Take a breath in. And again, you're welcome to stay up on the palms, lower to the forearms, or you can take it all the way down to the mat, your choice. And remember that pigeon pose is a really interesting perspective into our left and right sides of the body. And so day to day and side to side, our bodies are a little bit different. They can change. Some days you might feel a little tighter or less flexible on one side than the other. For me, that is my left side right now. <laughs> I'm feeling a little extra tight in my left hip. So I'm just breathing into it and being gentle with it. relaxing into this stretch here. If you're up on the palms or forearms, you can just keep your gaze at the front of the mat or maybe let your head hang heavy. Good. Hmm, take one more breath here. And then as you're ready, we're gonna all press onto the palms. We're going to scooch that left hand right outside the left knee, tucking our right toes, lifting that right leg, keeping our pigeon shape. Here we go, we're gonna lift and lower. Pigeon pose push-ups. Oh yeah, right at the end, let's get it done for three two, and one. Send your left leg up and back, bending into your left knee. <sighs> Opening into that hip. Take a breath. <sighs> Wonderful. We'll set that left foot down. Take a final inhale in your downward dog, and with that inhale, lift your heels. And then with your exhale, drop your knees to the mat, and we're just going to press up into kneeling. Now let's try to keep our toes tucked for this so you get a nice little foot stretch. This can become intense for the feet. So if you need to, you can relax to the top of the feet instead. So I'm just gonna turn to face you for this. Kneeling, toes tucked, feet planted. We're gonna take our arms out wide to a T. And then we're just going to give ourselves a big hug. Pull your shoulders down and then drop your right ear towards your right shoulder. Inhale, center, exhaling left. Good, we'll come back through center one more time. And then let's take it for a full roll all the way around if that feels okay on the neck. Good. Come back through center, open those arms, shake them out. And then from here, we're just gonna switch it up. So let's see if you're paying attention. Opposite arm on top this time. Give yourself another great big hug. Pull the shoulders down away from your ears. And this time look straight up, inhale. Straight down, exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Last time. Beautiful work. Come back through center. Shake it out. <sighs> All right. We will end with a spinal twist. So we're just going to come onto the side, swing the legs out in front of us long. And I'm going to take my left foot to the outside of my right thigh. My right foot stays flexed back towards my face. I'm going to turn to plant my left hand directly behind me. Left arm pressing into the bottom of my spine, just like a little kickstand. Right arm lifting, inhale, breath. And then use your exhale to twist right elbow to the outside of your left knee. 
Good. From the heart center, we twist now. Inhale, grow tall through the spine and up through the crown of your head. And from the heart center, exhale to twist. Maybe your gaze finds that back left corner of your mat. Take another inhale. Take a deeper exhale if it's available. And use your inhale breath to unwind. We'll switch hands, so the right hand plants, and just a gentle little counter twist. Good. Back through center. Switch those legs. Left leg extends long, left toes flexed. Right foot to the outer left thigh. Right hand plants behind you. Inhale, left arm reaches. Exhale, we twist. Left elbow to the outside of the right knee. Again, from this heart center space, grow tall through the crown of the head, and from the heart we twist. Maybe your gaze goes over the outer right edge of your mat. Good, take another breath here. Maybe a little deeper. And then slowly we unwind on an inhale. Left hand planting, right arm inside, counter twist. And back through center. Ha! Extend both legs out long. We are ready for our final resting pose, which is a little different from normal Shavasana. We are taking legs up the wall. So I'm going to do this in the center of the room so you can see what it looks like without a wall. And if you do have a wall, if you're already next to it, or if you'd like to scoot your mat up against it, please feel free. The back of your legs are what's going to rest up against that wall. Good. Now, whether you're against a wall or in the center of the room, you want to draw a straight line from ankles to knees to hips. So if your legs are stacked directly above your hips, it becomes relatively effortless to let them hang here. When you're ready, we're going to extend our arms to a T with your palms pressing down into the floor. Legs up the wall is an infamous pose for stress relief for reducing anxiety, for calming mind and body, slowing down the systems of the body, reversing the blood flow from the extremities, taking this time to slow down. Now I invite you to revisit this evening's mantra and then to take a moment to acknowledge your accomplishment and in so doing acknowledging your ability to embrace any challenge that life throws your way because you've got this. You can persevere. You can find the lesson within the challenge and you can grow stronger from it. Now if your legs are up against a physical wall I invite you to stay here for your final Shavasana. If you're in the middle of the room like me and you'd like to stay with legs up the wall, please feel free. However, if you'd prefer to take more of a regular Shavasana, then you can bend your knees and slowly release them down. Legs extending long on the mat. Either option is wonderful. The choice is entirely up to you. This is where I will leave you in your practice this evening. Take all the time you would like in your legs up the wall pose or your final resting Shavasana. Namaste.